All right, thanks for joining us today on Crooked Mustache. The episode doesn't get more straightforward than this. We're working on rear brakes. Stay tuned. All right, now, as I said in the intro, we're gonna be working on the rear brakes. Now, 90% of this video is going to apply to pretty much every car. Maybe I should have said that this will apply to about 90 something is percent of all cars. Typically, unless you have high performance rear brakes, you're typically gonna have a setup where you have a single piston caliper on the back and some cars have actually transitioned to where your emergency brake or your parking brake operates the caliper instead of a separate parking brake inside the hub, which is what we're dealing with now. If this is all integrated, so it's gonna be very simple. So, so for, the, for today's application, we're going with a basic ceramic package from CarQuest. We'll pick these up at Advanced Auto Parts. Now, some cars do call for semi-metallics, which are the next tier down. That's your basic OE pad. You can upgrade to ceramics, and these days the prices are cheap enough that unless you're trying to keep your car running on a shoestring budget, ceramic brakes are worth it. Now, also, this thing is quite old, so we're going to have to be replacing the rotors. We're going to be replacing both the left and the right rear rotors. We're going to be focusing on just the rear brakes, and that's why we need a special tool for this. There's a very simple one that gets placed inside the caliper. You twist it and it pushes the piston into the, uh, pushes the piston back into the caliper. But you can rent them at your local auto parts store, Advanced, uh, AutoZone, O'Reilly's. They'll all, they all have a tool rental program and that's what you can use. So I've done enough flapping. We're going to get started and we're going to make our job a lot easier by using an impact gun to take the wheels off. The other last thing you are going to need is you're going to need some anti-seize compound for where the for where the uh, brake pads actually clip on to the caliper bracket. And I'll show you that when we get to that step. For now, let's get the rear of the car up in the air. We're going to take the wheels off and we'll get we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so I didn't mention this, but I feel like it goes without saying. Jack and jack stands get the wheels off the floor when you work, and it's very important. Although I do have the jack there as well. I am supporting the weight of the vehicle primarily on the stands. Don't skip this. Now with the vehicle's wheels up in the air, you can use an impact gun or similar tool to remove the lug nuts. If all you've got is a old fashioned uh, breaker bar or the cross that most people keep in their garage, go ahead and loosen the lug nuts slightly just before you jack up the car. It'll make it easier to remove the lug nuts and the wheel once the car's up in the air. Now with the wheel removed and the car, well now with the wheel, with the car supported and the wheel removed, we're gonna focus on this. So we're gonna be changing the brake pads and the brake rotor. Now the first thing we're gonna to need to do, if I can get the camera, might have to switch angles here, is we're going to remove these two bolts right here and right here. These will remove the caliper from the bracket and allow us to get access to the pads. Now with the slide bolts removed, you can see them there on the magnetic dish, we can take a quick look at the pads and the inner one is worn, which is probably what was causing the slight grinding noise I was hearing. I'm going to set up a quick zip tie so that I can actually support the caliper itself off of the weight of the brake hose. We don't want to let it hang from the brake hose, that's a very bad thing. So once this is set up, we can actually go ahead and pop the pads off, push the piston back into the caliper and then go ahead and reassemble the whole system. Now it's time to take the pads out of the caliper. The outer, the outboard pad has a little clamp on the outside that kind of have to play with it a little bit with a screwdriver to help unseize the surfaces so that it'll slide out. Once you've got it out, it'll slide out with a little bit of force. And there we go. So we got the outboard pad out, doesn't look too bad. The inboard pad was the problem. That one actually has centering pins that go into the caliper uh, piston itself. That was the one causing us the issues, probably seized up, causing us to have to do the brakes in the first place. Now the next thing we're gonna do is take off the rotor. So on this particular car, there is no lip here that prevents me from pulling the rotor straight off. So there you go. And in this one, the emergency brake is integrated into the drum itself, the drum of the disc. So you guys can see there on the outer lip where the pad 
as it was messed up was starting to wear in on this. Now we can go ahead and take off these little metal slides. You will get a new set in the box with your brake pads. You want to go ahead and replace them because this is the actual surface that the brake pads will slide back and forth on. After we get those off, we're going to hit the surfaces of the bracket with a wire brush. Make sure we get off any additional material, corrosion, any brake dust or grease that might have built up under it. So this way you have a clean surface for the new slides. Next thing we're going to focus on is the brake rotor. I'm having to do this in voiceover since the fan that I had going made it impossible for anyone to hear me. Now one huge mistake I've seen people make when installing rotors is forgetting that this packaging contains an oil to protect the rotor. It's for the shipping and the storage of the rotor, but once this goes on the car, it needs to be washed off completely, either with soap and water, the entire rotor itself, or a complete bath with brake clean. You don't want this getting on your brake pads. All right, and there we go. It's been washed. And remember, we had to do the inside too, because this is where the emergency brake actually functions. New brake rotor. <laughs> nice job. Now with the slides in place, some may require this, some cars may not. On the Jeep it does. I'm using the longer ones that come in the box and I've got good play on the pad because if this sticks, the same thing's gonna happen again, which may be from using the smaller ones. All right, so we're gonna place this. This is copper grease. And this is not only to ensure that this moves freely, but this is also to prevent squeaking. So put that on. Just want to dab it around, making sure not to get any on the pad material itself, and then put some here on the actual slide in place. Obviously, don't get any on the brake loader. And this is to ensure that the pads can move freely and that they won't bind. I'm going to do it to the same thing on the outboard pad. So that it can move freely and so that we don't have squeaky brakes. And then just like we did on the bottom slide, we're gonna do it on the top slide. Making sure that we don't hit the rotor. Now we can cut the zip tie. All right, we can insert the back pad. That one has that little a little claw foot that has to go into the piston itself. Be fiddly to get it in. There we go. There we go. That one's in. Grab the outboard pad. This one has these little slides that lock it into place. All right, just like that. Then we're gonna put the whole thing over the brake disc itself. Making sure is that we don't bind, where's my finger? These up because these have to go back to connect to their proper mounting points. One eternity later. All right, it took a little bit of finessing, <laughs> but uh, what you're going to run into on any car, especially this one, is these are the slides that allow the pit, the caliper to move back and forth. And you're going to run into the part where these have to be positioned correctly. So pushed back in order to clear the bracket. Um, and that's the issue we ran into on this one. So the same thing, we're going to put some anti-seize on the shaft of the bolt, not on the threads. And this is going to allow the caliper to float because it is a floating caliper, making sure that we don't put any of this on the threads themselves. Place that through its perspective hole. We can start threading it just so it holds its place. I'm gonna grab the other one. All right.
once I have the vehicle on the ground, I'll actually go ahead and torque these. For the Jeep, it is between 95 and 100 foot pounds. There you go, guys. Uh, one of the easiest brake jobs ever, especially for being rear brakes. The Audi we did and other cars that I've done have been much more difficult. This is literally two bolts and you can take the rotor right off. There's no separate bracket that has to come off. We didn't do the drum brakes for the for the parking brake because I didn't think we needed it. The only tools, like I said, you are gonna need is a 13 mil for the bolts on the caliper, a brake compression tool, and obviously something to take the wheel off. Aside from that, this is one of the easiest brake jobs I've ever done. Super, super simple. The parts are very, very affordable. Whether you get them at any one of the auto parts suppliers, if you want, you can check our links in the video description. That's where we're gonna have links to the parts where, that we purchased from Advanced Auto Parts. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far and you like the video, drop us a like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming future videos. As always, for Crooked Mustache, I'm Alfred. We will see you next time. Dale!